Hi everyone, in this part we're going to show you how to debug the Windows environment using three different techniques. We're going to show you how to debug it using virtual KD, using network debugging, and using serial ports. We're also going to show you how to configure symbols. Let's get started. The first thing I want to say on this Windows kernel debugger is that some people name it WinDBG, some other people name it WinDebug, and some other people name it WinBag like a win bag. Uh, so it's basically the only real debugger to debug the Windows kernel. There are two alternatives. The first one is IDA Pro, which has a, a good interface to debug the Windows kernel apparently, but we're not going to use that technique because we're going to basically use a uh, win bag uh, synchronized with uh, this assembler with a plugin uh, as we'll see later. Um, and the other technique is to use a uh, HyperDBG, which is like the new promising replacement. But for this presentation, we're going to focus on win bag. So there has been a few versions of WinDBG. Uh, the first one was WinDBG, the classical WinDBG, and now you have WinDBG Preview. So really what you want is, oh, is mostly to use WinDBG Preview in general because it supports JavaScript scripting, which allows you to uh, write scripts uh, a lot easier than using the old WinDBG commands. It also supports a Windows layout, which is uh, out of the box, which is way better than the actual uh, single window uh, in the original WinDBG. It's also generally faster than the old WinDBG, uh, so generally you want to use it. There are some cases where you can't use it. For instance, if you use, if you try to debug really old Windows versions, things may break, structures may fail to be printed, or the debugger may just fail to, to work properly. So then in this case, you would just want to roll back to using the old WinDBG. There are three kernel debugging approaches, virtual KD, network, and serial debugging. Virtual KD is the recommended one. It's the fastest method if you have a Windows host. It will work though if you have OS X or Linux as a host. The second method is using network. So you're gonna have two Windows VMs. One is the debugger VM and the other one is the target VM. But this method will only work if you're debugging a target VM with Windows 8 or above. So for instance, it won't work if you're debugging Windows 7 or Windows XP. The third method is using serial ports. Again, you're going to use two virtual machines, one debugger VM and the other one target VM. It's basically the slower method. So you would only want to use that method if you're actually debugging an old Windows. So in our case, we're going to use two virtual machines and we're going to use network kernel debugging. So the first method is Virtual KD. Virtual KD is actually a very nice method. There has been a fork of Virtual KD, which is called Virtual KD Redux, which is maintained. So I would recommend using that. And you just follow the tutorial, which is basically to copy some tools on the target VM, run the install executable, and then it's going to basically install a driver. And then you reboot that virtual machine you're trying to debug. And at boot, you hit F8 in order to disable the driver signatures at boot. Then on the host, you're going to run a VMmon executable and you're going to have to make sure it actually shows that the VM is detected. So the way you're going to see that is that you have yes in the operating system column. So in this case, we started a VMware, uh, like the name of the machine is vulnerable VM. It's created a pipe, KD underscore virtual VM. And in front of that, we see a yes. So that means Visual KD was successfully installing the VM and we're ready to do the next step. If you don't see a yes, it means something went wrong during installation. So in this case, you're going to have to follow the manual instructions to copy the DLLs and configure the debug settings manually. So one, once you reboot the VM, as I said, you're going to have to disable the signature. Uh, so using F8 and then selecting this disable signature enforcement manually. And then after that, you're going to have to select disable driver signature enforcement. So after doing that, you're going to see that not only Virtual KD shows yes for the OS, but once you attach the debugger, it's going to actually show yes in front of the debugger column. So how do we attach the debugger? So on the host, you're going to run WinDBG preview, and then select file attached to kernel. And then you're going to have to fill in the pipe information, KD underscore the name of the virtual machine, as well as the board rate. Once you do that, it's going to actually show you the debugger. Yes, but sure, it's annoying to do that manually. So the, the fastest way is to use a batch script, especially if you're debugging more than one target. Like if you're trying to debug something on different VMs, you can create one batch script for each 
of your virtual machine and use the path to WinDBG and specifying the actual pipe for that VM. And then you save that into a debug, the Windows machine you're targeting. So we do provide a, a bash script uh, that you can use if you're using virtual KD. The next method we're going to talk about is network debugging. This is the one we're going to use in this training. So the method relies on a shared key, like a secret be between the debugger VM and the target VM, and also on a, a port number defined to reach the target VM. In this scenario, one is the client and the other one is the server. So on your debugger VM, you're going to have to find your host only IP address. It should be the second interface listed and you can ch check against the VMware Virtual Network Editor that it actually corresponds to the host-only interface. Once you have that IP, basically what you do is you go on the target VM and you enable kernel debugging. So you can execute these two BCD edit commands. And we see in the second one, we specify the key, which is kind of arbitrary. We just need to remember it. It can be a.b.c.d. And then you specify the host IP, which is the IP you got from the first step on the debugger VM. Note that it doesn't create any additional line when Windows boots. So once you've done that and you actually reboot the target VM, you should actually expect to see Windows hanging and not continuing booting. And it's gonna do that for a couple of seconds or maybe a minute uh, until you actually connect with WinDBG. However, if you don't connect right away, it will actually continue booting, but with the kernel debugger attached, so you can still attach later after the target VM has booted. But the fact that it hangs is a good method to make sure kernel debugging was configured correctly on the target VM. Once the target VM is waiting for you to attach, you can again use WinDBG attached to kernel, and then you specify the port number as well as the key, and you don't need to specify a target VM IP address. It could be that when you attach with WinDBG, it's going to show you something like that. So it doesn't give you any way to input commands, but it's still working. And if you hit break, it will actually show you this kind of thing where you see that it actually works and it was connected successfully. So we can automate that with a batch script using this command. And again, we provide a batch file that you can use from the debugger VM. It could be that when you actually attach to the target VM when with the actual debugger VM, it could be that the target VM hangs. If that happens to work around it, you can basically disconnect the kernel debugger and then reboot the target VM and then try again, reconnect the kernel debugger. And at some point it should work. So the third method is to use serial debugging. In this case, we're going to use a shared name pipe between both the debugger VM and the target VM. So again, one is the client and the other one in the server. So in order to do so, we have to shut down both virtual machines and configure a serial port to both settings. We use a similar approach for Linux and Windows. The difference is just the name of the pipe that is OS specific. So for Windows, we can see we use a anti slash anti slash dot syntax and then the name of the, of the pipe. Again, we use the same pipe for both of them and one of them in the client and the other one in the server. And for Linux, we can use a, a name socket on the file system. Again, one is the server and the other one is a client. So then we boot the target VM and we configure kernel debugging using the serial method and the baud rate. Here, the debug port is one if you only have one serial port, but it could be that you have several serial ports and then you have to adapt the debug port number. Again, it's not going to show any additional line when Windows boots. So when it boots, it should hang again on the Windows boot screen until you actually connect with the debugger VM. So from the debugger VM, we again use the WinDBG preview attached to kernel method and fill the port information like the port. This port is the one for the debugger VM. And again, we can automate that using a bash script that we provide in the tools. So if you get this kind of window when trying to attach, you can hit break and it will force it to connect. You will end up having something like that. So the last thing we want to do is want to enable symbols. Indeed, if you are debugging Windows binaries by default, you won't have any idea of, of the structures of the actual functions being called. Enabling symbols is very important. You can do so manually in WinDBG using the simpath command. It's not going to be persistent, but it's going to work right away. And you're going to be able to see the changes and the symbols after using the reload command. Really, the best method is to actually define an environment variable because then you don't need to do it every time you start WinDBG and it will be persistent among, among reboots. It has already been done by the 
installer scripts so you don't have to do it yourself. We can see that we booted our target VM as well as our debugger VM already. So here we're gonna want to debug the target VM from the actual debugger VM where we run WinDBG. And so to do so, we're gonna have to configure kernel debugging on the target VM and then attach from the debugger VM with WinDBG. So in order to do so, we need to first get the actual IP address of the debugger VM. So if we do IP config on the debugger VM, we're gonna see two interfaces. These interfaces correspond to the two interfaces of the VM we can find with Control-D. So with Control-D, we see the first one is the NAT interface, the second one is the host only interface. And so we are interested by the second one because that's the network shared with the target VM. So the second one is 92.132. We can confirm that it corresponds to the host interface by going into Edit, Virtual Network Editor. I will show you that the host only is in the range 92.0, which corresponds to the second one. Okay, so now that we have the IP address, we're gonna go into the actual target VM and we're gonna start an administrator CMD. And from that, we're gonna use the bcd edit debug on command. And then we're gonna use the bcd edit dbg settings. So here we're gonna use the port and key provided. However, we need to change the IP address to be the one for the debugger VM. Now it should be done. We can reboot the target VM. So here, as you can see, it's actually hanging on the blue window, there is nothing happening. You can see here it's actually timing. So if we are really fast, we can attach with the actual debugger VM. Going into tools, and here you'll find the debugger VM network. If you look at that, you'll see that it actually uses WinDBG and the network method. So the target VM is hanging. From the debugger VM, we're gonna connect over the network. Here it's saying waiting to reconnect. The target VM is still hanging. So if we hit break, it may wake up the target VM. So we see it's not working. Actually, now it's working. It's just a little bit slow. So we can see it's connected to the Windows 10 target and it's actually showing symbols. If we continue with the go command, the target VM will continue booting. For whatever reason, I've noticed that sometimes the virtual machine can be quite slow to boot. And one way I found to actually unlock it was to actually start Wireshark on that specific VMNet1 interface. And you're going to see all the UDP packets on port 50,000 sent by WinDBG. After you do that, your virtual machine will be booted. So now that the target VM is started, one thing you want to do is make sure the debugger is attached. So we can see we can break get the backtrace and continue execution. And then on the target VM, you know it started. You want to actually do a snapshot of it. So booted with debugger. And the reason for that is here you can see the green arrow because it's actually a snapshot when it's booted. And the reason is we can actually do lots of things on it, we can even detect the debugger. And then here, the virtual machine, we can restore the snapshots. So using that orange arrow, we can restore the snapshot to boot it with debugger. Say yes. Here, the virtual machine won't be usable with that snapshot until we actually attach with the debugger. But the main advantage is that we can mess up with the virtual machine and then we don't have to reboot it entirely. 
we can just reattach. So actually here I can reuse the, the virtual machine, even if the debugger is not attached, and then I can attach the debugger. We see it's connected, but it's actually not showing more than that. So what we can do is hit break. And now we're back to debugging. So the thing we can do in WinDBG is just show like kernel function, see the actual see modules that are being loaded. So here we can see only NTOS kernel, which is named NT, is actually shown. So to reload all the symbol, we can do reload slash F. And it's going to actually download all the symbols into the folder that has been defined, which is in C symbols. So we're going to see lots of folders being added here and it's going to take a while. Okay. So after a few minutes, you'll see that you have lots of PDB files corresponding to all the modules and rejecting LML will actually show you all the the modules that have symbols. So we see we have more symbols that we used to have before. Here. Before and after. Okay. That ends the WinDBG video. Thank you for watching.